Welcome to a new video. My name is Nico and today we are going to look into the manifest.json which is a very important file when you're developing a plugin for Stream Deck. So we will go through what the manifest is, what you can do with it, how you can add actions to your plugin using the manifest, what fields are important to update and which fields you can just leave alone. So let's get right into it. So the manifest.json, you will find this in the first level of your plugin folder and it's right there under the logs folder. You have the name up here, then you have a version here that you can increment over time as you develop. And then here's the author name. And now here we have the actions list. Let me get to the actions list in the end. The category, that's the name that you will see up here. So if we change this to, for example, my plugin, then as soon as we start building this, this will update. And I can also update, for example, the I can hear of the category. So in the images we have plugin and we have marketplace PNG. So I could, for example, say um, market place, and then we can, it will also update that. Here's the code path to your plugins code. Do not touch this because this is the auto generated file that is being generated by the Node.js SDK when it is parsing and compiling your TypeScript code. So leave this one alone. Then here's the description of what your plugin is doing and that is being shown in the preference window of Stream Deck. And this is the icon that is also shown there. So I will show a picture right here, how this looks like. Um, the SDK version is the current version that we are using within Stream Deck. So don't touch that, that is already fine. And here we say this is the minimum version of Stream Deck that is required to run your plugin. And as we're using the Node.js SDK, 6.4 is the minimum version that is required. Now we can continue to the OS. And here for Mac, we have 12. And for Windows, it's 10. If, you, if there's any specifics that require a ha higher version, I would recommend putting it in here. But apart from that, for now, 12 and 10 is good. And then down here, we have the Node.js uh, description. This is already predefined. You probably don't need to change it. As soon as you want to ship the plugin, you can disable debugging, but there you go. And then last but not least, we have the UUID of your plugin, which is the identifier within the system as well. So make sure this is unique. So now let's go back to the actions and see what that does. So first of all, we have the name of our action. So if I'm changing this, for example, like this, here's my UUID of the action, which is partly my UUID of the plugin plus a name. Then I have an um, icon here that I can set. So this would be this icon right there. I can set a tooltip and I can say whether that action is suitable for the key presses and the dials or only the dials, which means if I'm adding encoder to here, this action will also appear on the dials. So at the moment it wasn't added and I haven't built it yet. So you don't see the plugin here. As soon as I build it, with this in there, it will also show up on the dials and you will be able to add the action to a dial. And here you can define states for your action. So for example, your action has two predefined states. You can say, you can just add to that list and also add the images um, that state should have and where the title, for example, should be aligned to. Usually every action has one state and you can update that from within the plugin but if you already know all the states that you require, you can define them here too. And if you want to add another action, all we need to do is copy this, add a comma to be J uh, JSON compliant. And this is now my second act action, which is in this case, not encoder compatible. And now we can actually start, start building. And here we go. And now we can see the icon updated, the title updated. I have the counter now in here. And also on this side, I have it as well. Because I didn't update the UUID, we now have a little problem. Um, so let's rebuild it and restart it and that should fix that part. And there you go. On the dials, we now have only one action available, while here we have two actions. And now also the new name is um, in there. And this is how you can use the manifest.
very much for watching. Now you know how you can use the manifest.json while developing your plugin. If you want to learn more about plugin development, I will link a few videos around here. So stay tuned and subscribe if this is helpful.